What is up, Pro Guides family, and welcome back. Today, we're gonna to be sharing one of the most inspiring stories, and that's gonna be about Cypher PK. However, we're going to be doing it from my bedroom instead of the normal studio because of what is going on with the coronavirus. Things are definitely different right now, and I know a lot of you guys have been affected by what's going on. If you guys feel isolated or lonely, you're not alone. A lot of us feel the same way. And I just wanted to let you guys know that you have a community with us and you have a family with us. Many of you guys may know me as Kristoff from our League of Legends channel or some of the content on this channel. But what you might not know is that I started this company five years ago with my friend Sam with the one goal of just getting gamers better at gaming. And we had no idea the incredible community that we would build with all of you guys. So I wanna thank you guys from the bottom of our heart for coming back and watching our content. And I'm gonna try really, really hard during this season to get you guys some inspiring content, some amazing stuff that hopefully is entertaining and inspiring for you guys to watch. If you guys want to connect with me personally, feel free to add me on Instagram and we can talk there. And hopefully you guys are having a great day and that you're just relaxing and enjoying Fortnite. All right guys, enjoy the video. Oh my God! Cypher PK is a source of pure entertainment. You can always catch him on stream doing educational commentaries, interacting with his chat, or just having a wholesome time laughing it up with friends. He's going back down. He sees him, he sees him, he sees him. He sees him, he sees him. He sees him. Three, two, two, one. Go! Yes! <laughs> oh my God! <laughs> No matter how you see him, no doubt, Cypher knows how to flawlessly blend skillful and informative gameplay into downright hysterical content. Oh! What? I killed him? Bro, I'm gonna get banned for aimbot after that one, bro. Still, what many of us don't know about was how long of a journey the man with the gorgeous slicked hair went through to reach where he's at today. What? A lot of you guys might think that Cypher's rise to fame sprung out of nowhere once Fortnite was released, but his journey actually began over 15 years ago when he was just a kid. It was the mid 2000s and Cypher started to get into gaming. One day he was looking at different browser games online when he saw an ad for this up and coming MMO called RuneScape. So he checked it out and like many of us, he immediately became infatuated. RuneScape had it all, fleshed out combat, real player interactions, an economy system and a vast world just waiting to be explored. This was the first title that ever really hooked Cypher, and for him, it turned gaming from just a hobby into a full-blown passion. RuneScape is also where he came up with his name Cypher PK. Cypher was actually just a cool sounding word he chose at random, but the PK stands for player killer, and he put it into his name because there was nothing more he enjoyed than that heart-pounding PvP combat. Sounds like me in World of Warcraft, honestly. RuneScape was Cypher's game of choice for the next several years, and when he got to middle school, he decided to learn how to channel his love for gaming into something more productive. Since sixth grade, I wanted to be a YouTuber, like a gaming YouTuber. It's been a dream of mine since I was really, really young. I started learning how to edit YouTube videos uh, in middle school for, for school projects. A lot of times, uh, Instead of like making a poster to present to class, you can make a video. And I thought that was pretty cool. So I, I, was one of the only, I was the only person in my class to do that. I started making videos for school projects instead of making posters. So I started learning how to edit videos. In 2011, nearly six years before Fortnite, Cypher uploaded his first YouTube video. Of course, it was RuneScape content, and as expected, it was pretty crude. Recorded on a laptop, if you listen carefully, you can actually hear the trackpad clicking in the background. This guy right here. Get the 66! 66, 66! Triple kill! Triple kill. Oof, that is a scuffed setup if I've ever seen one, but hey, he was young and everyone starts somewhere. God, if you look at our old Pro Guides videos, you'll know that we started off pretty rough as well. Though eventually, after about two years of RuneScape videos, Cypher moved on to a new MMO title, The Elder Scrolls Online. 
And Cypher took ESO very seriously. I mean, he had to. It's not like one of those games you can quickly get a grasp of. There were countless class builds and complex abilities, so Cypher saw a bit of an opportunity here. He started posting build guides, PvP commentaries, and tips and tricks to help spread his extensive knowledge of the game. These educational videos ended up being a huge success, and from that, his channel slowly began to grow. His YouTube community was large enough at this point where he could potentially start pushing his viewers toward a live stream. So he jumped at the opportunity and began streaming full time on Twitch. But soon after, ESO started to burn him out. There's only so long you can play a single game day in and day out and not have the monotony drive you insane. So he did what a lot of streamers typically end up doing and he expanded out to other games. Elder Scrolls was still his main game, but he'd occasionally hop on a variety of titles like CSGO, Overwatch, and even H1Z1 to get a glimpse of the new battle royale genre everyone was talking about. Doing so well so far, we've killed two people. We haven't died within the first 10 minutes. There's 30 people left. Something like that. Another vehicle. I know that last clip might not show it, but the thing is about Cypher PK is that no matter what game he played, as long as he set his mind to it, he became great. Even in a game like Overwatch, which was super competitive at the time, he managed to climb all the way up to the top. Yes! Yes! I'm so happy! Cypher's appreciation for PvP combat eventually drove him to a newly released medieval game called For Honor, and it was exactly what he had been waiting for. It provided a mix of strategy and action in a fantasy setting, which made Cypher fall in love. I need some health back. Oh, one shot, let's go! Let's go! What the f***? One shot! Mm. Cypher eventually got so good at the game, he even went pro. Although the For Honor pro scene wasn't huge or anything, going pro in any game is such a standout accomplishment that it showed how incredible Cypher was at pretty much any game that he played. Let's go! Let's go! Let's go! I'm the champion! I'm the champion! Still though, being a pro player in any game at that time was hard to make a living and it was a difficult lifestyle. And going pro in the game For Honor also had some problems. For starters, the game was plagued with numerous issues, as in it was a bug-ridden mess. So much so that Cypher's arguably most notable moment was when he played in the season three live LAN event and this happened. Now, Oscar has actually been the aggressor. More so when they're at these this one There's bar. Zone. Oh, actually, man. one zone is gonna do it. So Cypher just goes into that all block. Oh, actually, it's the knockdown off what? of that because of the level oh. change. He actually got what? the trip into the heavy. Did you see that? He actually, it looked like what happened what? was he got thrown off of a rock. There was a little bit of a level change. It tripped him up. Off I know you're all probably confused, including myself, but apparently a known glitch in the game made Cypher pull off an otherwise impossible move to secure the match. And you can pretty much tell by his reaction, he was shocked. It just shouldn't have happened. But despite all the problems, he was still a pro. He wasn't gonna just leave and throw away that opportunity, or at least that was the plan until the gaming landscape changed forever. That's right, Fortnite got released. Where is he? Oh, I see him, I see him, I see him, I see him. I see him. You ready? Yeah, yeah. Box him up. He's boxed it. Oh, you're in with him. You boxed me. We play second! We got second place! <laughs>
Fortnite was Cypher's new favorite game. A lot of us might think that he switched to Fortnite for more views or that sweet Twitch Prime money, but that wasn't the case. As a matter of fact, his view count initially dipped as fans that were primarily there for For Honor content stopped watching him. It turns out that Cypher was into Fortnite because he genuinely loved the game. The smooth, action-packed gameplay alongside the one-of-a-kind building mechanic got him addicted, just like all of us, right away. Oh god, let's see if he'll use it. I think if we go up there, he'll follow us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, he's gonna use it, he's gonna use it. Please, 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 please. Yes! Oh my <laughs> god, it worked! Oh! Oh my god, I got the angle and everything, GG. <laughs> and so, Cypher's focus shifted. No more ESO and no more For Honor. Now he'd be taking all his video editing and content creation know-how and putting it all towards Fortnite. And of course, with all the effort he was putting in, his skills in the game began to rapidly improve. So much so that a few months later, Cypher had a fateful run-in with the young architect himself, TSM Myth. GG man, GG, well played. To outbattle and defeat the player considered to be the best in the world was a massive feat. That win finally gave Cypher the recognition he deserved, and as a result, his stream views began skyrocketing out of control. Fast forward a few months and competitive Fortnite was finally starting to kick off. The first majorly hyped up event was Keemstar's Friday Fortnite, and right away, because of his status as a big wig streamer, Cypher got an invitation. But he needed a duo partner, so he thought of all the different streamers he could ask, and he chose Nick Merckx. They both fought tooth and nail, eliminating as many players as they could, and at one point it didn't seem as if they were going to make it. A lost match against Svennos and Jelly dropped them to the loser's bracket, which meant one more loss would be the end. But Cypher wasn't going to let that happen. I knocked one, I knocked one, bro. An off one. Okay, I'm gonna move down on it. Got the launch pad, dude. I'm gonna use it. Okay. See you down here. I'm gonna break this. Break it, break it. Got them all. Oh, dude, I love it. Good job. In the end, Cypher gave the push needed to take home the first place prize of $5,000 in the inaugural Friday Fortnite. Considering they almost dropped out, it was an impressive comeback to say the least. And this win solidified Cypher as not only a top content creator in Fortnite, but a top competitor as well. Cypher went on to play in the summer and fall skirmishes, mostly with Nick again, and with a few top 10 finishes, they managed to do quite well for themselves. 10 grand! <laughs> Let's go! But although Cypher PK was an incredible player at the start of Fortnite, in 2019, there was a shift happening. Players were getting better, way better. We started seeing those cracked 14-year-old pros like Mongrel and Mr. Savage make an enormous splash in the scene. But Cypher, well, he had a channel to run. There was no way he'd be able to run scrims for eight hours a day and spend the rest of his time free building and creative, at least not without sacrificing his dream of being an incredible content creator. So when the World Cup was announced, everyone wondered if Cypher would even give qualifying a shot. He hadn't been taking competitive seriously in the past year and also didn't have a duo partner. Those facts alone made a lot of people doubt Cypher could even come close to placing well in the World Cup. But the thing is, Cypher hates negative comments. So he took it as a challenge. What made you want to start competing uh, in the World Cup? So uh, a lot of it was hearing people doubt me and just reading comments about people who, you know, saw me as a great content creator and I, I made a lot of, you know, funny, entertaining Fortnite content. A lot of people thought I couldn't hang with the pros and I wasn't good enough to compete at that level. Um, so 
you know, I, I don't let negative comments get to me, but I do see a lot of the times when I see uh, some of the negative comments, I take them as a challenge. The only problem was that Cypher needed a duo partner. He wanted a grinder, someone who would give their all and commit hard along the way. And out of everyone that he knew, there was only one guy that fit that description to a T, Ranger. Although Ranger wasn't the most well-known, Cypher knew that he had what it would take. Ranger's amassed thousands upon thousands of wins, and he streams for something like eight hours every single day. Undoubtedly, the epitome of a grinder and exactly who Cypher was looking for. The qualifiers kicked off in April, and well, if you know Cypher or follow competitive Fortnite at all, then you already know that they unfortunately didn't end up qualifying. But for everyone that supported Cypher's journey, it was still nothing short of a fantastic experience. Throughout the whole five-week qualifying event, we saw improvement and results at a level no one ever expected. The first week, our duo placed just outside the top 100. Second week, they did slightly better. In the third week, all that time practicing together really started to show, and they finished 14th. Then, in week four, we saw the performance of a lifetime. Going into the last match, everyone was rooting for Cypher and Ranger. Them qualifying would be a story for the ages. They made it past the early game, the mid game, all the way to the very end. It was unreal. But unfortunately, despite winning the match, it wasn't enough. A few teams barely scraped ahead, and they finished in fourth place. That still meant they took home thousands of dollars, but they didn't earn a seat in the New York Finals. Although they didn't win, with those results, Cypher had won back the respect of all the people that doubted him. They went from bashing him and calling him just a content creator to knowing that he could definitely hold his own against top pros. Just one more good game and they would have clutched it. But if anything, this wasn't a loss for Cypher. This was him accomplishing his goal in the first place. He proved to his fans and the community that he still had what it took to hang among the best. And while not qualifying may have been bittersweet, it was a victory nonetheless. Cypher PK has had tremendous growth since the World Cup, and he doesn't seem to be slowing down at all. Some might say that it was luck that got him to where he's at today, but after hearing about his backstory, it was dedication and hard work that really paid off. Right now, with the duos event going on, Cypher's back on the competitive grind, this time with none other than Ninja. But these guys have shown time and time again that when they put their minds to something, they can achieve greatness. Although the competition is fierce, you never know. This time around, Cypher just might show the world what he's made of. All right, guys, that's it for the video. Thank you so much for watching. Again, I wanna know what's going on with you guys. Please let me know if you guys are safe amidst this craziness that's going on with the coronavirus. In these difficult times, what my dad used to tell me is that you grow a lot stronger. I know that all of us are gonna get stronger and better because of this. And hell, we can use this time to practice Fortnite and enjoy ourselves. Once again, it's been Kristoff. Feel free to connect with me on Instagram if you're feeling a bit isolated. I would love to connect with you guys. And if you want to get better at Fortnite, make sure to go to ProGuides.com and go find a pro coach right now. Thank you guys so much for watching, and good luck in your next few games.